So it's time to do a Nomad Beginners course and we're going to do a little character and we're going to walk you through if you've never ever used iPad sculpting or any sculpting whatsoever. So you need an iPad, you need an Apple Pencil and you need to be able to get hold of Nomad Sculpt from the App Store. So grab all of those things and join me for a Nomad Beginners class. So let's start at the very beginning and when Nomad opens you're going to get a scene like this with a sphere. So as this is a complete beginner's um, tutorial I'm going to go really really slowly so I want you to watch either my hands here or the screen up above and I'm going to go very slowly and point to everything and say what it is I'm pointing to so that you can really follow along. The idea being that you can run this over and over again. This is an iPad uh, 2021 and it's got 16 gigs so this is the highest end you can get so I'm going to try and keep it to a level where anyone with a more compromised system or less RAM can, can use it so a more basic iPad this is an Apple Pencil a Gen 2 Apple Pencil with a rubber tip and um, you can get them for a few quid on Amazon and it stops you making any noise when you tap in and this here around the outside is called a Sketchboard Pro and I use that quite a lot as a, as a like a little workstation and that works well for me so this is the normal version of Nomad that you'll be used to if you've already purchased it and the only thing I've changed is I'm left-handed so my menu might be flipped to yours so if you come up here second button from the right hand side and if you look down, you've got interface or debug. You want to stay on interface. You can use your finger here if you don't want to use your pen. And you scroll to the bottom and you've got flip top, flip middle, flip bottom. So what I like to do is um, I flip the middle for me. So that means that the tools are the opposite way around. I leave the top. So that's the same for you or anyone who hasn't changed the interface. And I sometimes flip the bottom. If you're on an Android and you're left-handed, you will want to flip that. This is obviously an iPad. Uh, and, and then the iPad handles palm rejection better than, than a, an Android device. For Nomad, anyway. So, let's just start with the utter basics. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called blocking out a character. And that means we're going to make this character. And what I've done there is I've just brought an image in to the background. So, I've gone up to the menu where it says background down to the little plus and hit plus and I've brought this image in and I'll include this down in the description if anybody wants it to to, to use it um, to follow along so you don't need to keep it there all the time and um, I will for a while and there's other you can change to other images as well so I've got um, an image of uh, quite a few different versions of it so if you click it again and come down to the bottom here you can change the scale of that image in the background. So you could, for example, just have it up in the top corner like that as a reminder. Um, and that just becomes something that we can work to. So to be honest, for you, I'm gonna leave that there. Now, what I'd recommend is you put the full face in the background. So we've got a sphere already, so that's fine. And the material, you may or may not like it. So if you come up to the menu here, and if you have a look in shading, and you can have PBR, which is physically based rendering, which is for much later on. But we're going to just use matte caps. And this is what you might see in ZBrush or Blender. And it gives you quite a few matte caps there. Um, and those matte caps there, you can just change them. They're just material captures. And what it basically means is the material is captured from an image. So this is a photograph of a red clay. So you, you, that, that's like a creamy colour. That's a grey colour. So the, to, to move the... the what's effectively the light around you could do this but you're just rolling the image around here so we don't do this when when we're doing mat caps so don't get too worried about that so for you as a new user switch to in shading switch to mat cap and just pick a, pick one that you like so let's let's just start with red wax because this little guy is going to be red so we're going to do something called blocking out and I've got a sphere already. Now blocking out means I'm going to try and make um, all of my character with just basic rudimentary shapes. So you don't have to look for any detail. All you're looking for is the basics of the shape. So I've got a head and as you can see, that'll do. It matches. So um, 
it's a little bit too tall. So I'm gonna use something called the gizmo and I'm gonna start using the tools here on the left hand side. Again, it might be on the right. And with this button at the top, you can have it in a long line or you can have it in a block like that. Now the gizmo might be at the bottom down here for you. For example, it might be down here. So don't worry if things are in the right place, just locate them and you can easily just tap on and move them wherever you want. So if you look at what mine is like, there's not many changes, but it's good to move the ones you find you're using a lot. So for example, if you use to, do, if you do a lot of painting, then you could just pick paint and drop that to your number one or two slot and then move it, you know, move it back if, you do, if you're not using it as much. So the ones you use a lot, move them to the top. So we're going to use gizmo and that gives us this funny little um, uh, gizmo actually. And if you can see while we're, we're doing it, I'll show you about the basics of movement. So I'm going to roll around with one finger. I'm going to pinch and zoom with two fingers, either hand, and I'm going to move around with two fingers. So remember that. So it's pinch and zoom, it's move around and it's rotate. That's all very, very simple for, for anyone um, who's used to an iPad. Do it with the pen instead if you like. You, obviously the roll around you can do with the pen. You can't do the double pinch with the pen. And you can also move your model around with these little arrows in the middle here. And you can move them around like this. Now if you move it off the centre there, you've gone away from the world centre. But how do you know what the world centre is? If you come up here to the third one along and you've got display settings and you can put on grid like that and now pinch and zoom rotate around and you can see we've gone off the center so we'll just double tap to or sorry double fingers to undo and undo is also down here at the bottom left if you if you don't like it um with, with, with just doing a, a double finger tap so that can help you locate where you are in, in, in 3D space as well. So we'll leave that on for the moment. So we've got this. We know we can move it with the arrows. We can also scale it with the outer ring. And we can also rotate it with these rings. So you can rotate it on the different what are called axes. So if we're thinking of this as being, um, let's do it this way so you can see it. You've got blue is our Z. And that's Z is in and out of the screen this way you've got green up and down which is often called y and you've got red which is left and right of the model which is often called x now it's different in different programs so this is how it is in nomad so we're, we're quite happy to just just for for the time being we'll go with x y and z in you know z front to back x left and right and y up and down it's very common in a lot of programs like zbrush and maya um, that you may know of and and then other programs like 3d studio max or 3ds max will have the y in a different place and anything to do with 3d printing the z would be up and down because it's um, just the way 3d printers work so there's lots of differences in 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 that in different programs we're happy with how it is at the moment now, because we're doing a character, we want to use symmetry. So symmetry is here, I'll switch it on. If you want to adjust anything, you can have a look up here in the symmetry tab, which we will do later on, but don't worry about that now. So let's just do some basic moves with symmetry on. So if you come to the top and use move, and this is one of the biggest brushes we're going to use, and we want to slide this slider here, which is called the radius, and this one is the intensity. So if you watch the little red circle there, the radius gives you how big of an influence your move will be. And the, the intensity gives you uh, how much power that would have. So let's go really high and really high and see what happens there. And can you see it change color a bit there? So we don't want that. And there's a reason why that happens. So we do a two fingers tap and look up here. This one is called painting. And we've got stroke painting switched on. So we're going to turn that off. What it was trying to do was paint as well as move. And we don't want that. So once that's off, come back. Large radius. And you can see there we can move it around. Two fingers to undo. Let's turn the intensity right down. And now try and move. And you can see that the move is much more subtle. So if you want to be doing careful, slow, considered moves then turn your intensity right down and you won't make such dramatic sweeping moves like that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to shape the head a little bit. So he's wider and he's 
you can see what I mean. If you just do this and put him over there, you, we're, we're matching that one at the moment. So he's wider and a bit more square. And the front, pull that out a little bit because a face is actually always quite rounded. A, a face around the front there is like a cylinder. It's not flat. And that will really show later on that you've, you know, if you don't do that. I'm just moving around with those two fingers, pinching and zoom. And just with move, I'm shaping that head. So I'm blocking out the shape that I want. So that looks good. And you can also, smaller brush, where you think the eyes are gonna go, just come to the side like this and just pull them back in a little bit. We're not making the eyes yet, we're just giving the skull the shape of where the eyes are going to go. And a little bit tighter towards the nose, and, and that's where the nose will be. And we can also, pull out the cheeks a little bit. So take your time with this bit. Don't worry if it doesn't look like the reference. We're not bothered about that at this stage. All we're bothered about is these basic tools and learning how to do this. So you've got places for the eyes and you've got places for the cheeks and the chin. So that's all good. From the side here now, can you see how flat his mouth is? So what we probably want to do is pull that mouth out as well. So it gives him almost like a little bit of a snout. Whoops, made a mistake there. So remember, two fingers tap. So that's good enough now. That's more than enough for his um, basic skull. So we're going to add another model now. So we're going to go up to the top here. And we're going to go in the scene, we're going to add a sphere. And even though you can't see it, there is a sphere inside. Remember to move. And there's the sphere. So we're going to use the outer ring, shrink it down and move that as his little nose. And we'll just pop that somewhere like that because we know roughly where that's going to go. So don't get too worried about having anything accurate yet. It's just having one of everything at this point. Now, what does help you and what can help is if you have the eyes in place. So let's make another eye. So let's, uh, sorry, another sphere. So before we do that, if you look in the scene menu, we've now got sphere and sphere, and that's not gonna be helpful. So we want to go tap on the little pen icon and we'll change this one to eye or eyes. So, uh, sorry, <laughs> I've, changed, I've got it wrong. Change that to nose. And this one, the top one, we're going to change that to head. What that means is in this stack here, you can see what it is you're working on quite a lot. And if you see how it disappears as I click off here. If you don't want that to happen, if you want to keep any menu open, just hit this little icon here, this little pin, and that will keep it open while you're working on it, because sometimes you want to work on lots of these models. So we've got a head, a nose, and let's make another sphere. So let's bring that one out like this. And this one's going to be our eye. So we scale that right down. We're going to move it. Remember using the arrows, move it into place. We only want one of them and roughly move it into place like that. So our eye is in place and now we need two eyes. So we're now going to mirror him across. So come up to symmetry. It's not yet validated, which means it's not we're not able to sculpt on it yet. We'll go validate. So we've got it validated and you want symmetry enabled. We want to go to world center and you want to flip the left to the right like so. What that's done is it's taken this one across this, see this center line in the middle, or basically the center of the world, and it's flipped it across. And now you've got two eyes. So there are the eyeballs done. And what you can notice here is the eyes are just one piece together. If I put wireframe on here at the bottom, click wire, you can see that th these two are basically one model. Turn that wireframe off. So we've got eyes, nose we don't need a mouth at this stage because we're going to sculpt that on but what we do need now are some ears and there's lots of different ways to do this but i'll show you a very simple one so we want to hit under scene hit cylinder we want to come around to the side we want to move that up so we can see what we're doing we want to scale that down like so like so so it's a flat cylinder validate it so we can now sculpt on it rotate it with just this red line. If you want to do that numerically, it's in here. So you could rotate it on the red here by 90 degrees, but it doesn't matter here. We're just gonna do it by hand. We're gonna move him down, move him across, 
and then scale him up like so. And then what we can do from there, we can go back to our move tool and we can move it around. So we can go, we've got this proper little Yoda looking ear like so, little Maguire or Gremlin looking ear that's quite popular on this sort of character. And then all I'm doing is just pulling it around to get it to look like the reference. And we're going to shape it properly in a minute, so don't worry about that. If you think it's too blocky, even at this stage, you can use another tool we haven't touched yet called the flatten. And that's here. And what flatten will do, if you keep a small brush and just wherever you want to knock off those rounded edges, if you use flatten, you'll see that it literally flattens that nice edge there. And if you want to make it even better, hold smooth here and run that along the surface and that will smooth the surface down. So these are all good tools to use. So flatten and smooth. Watch, flatten and smooth. And that's this is the essence of digital sculpting. These tools are in every program. So if you learn it here, you're going to be able to do it in Blender. You're going to be able to do it in ZBrush to some degree. ZBrush is the harder one to learn out of all of them. And we're just moving that ear around. Just think about the ear that you've got up here and think of that shape. So that will do for now. So we've got head, eyes, ear, nose. So do we need to name it? I think we do. So the cylinder, so this sphere, if you remember, was the eyes. I am notoriously bad for not naming things, so I'm going to really try hard in this tutorial. Ears, to name it for you. Okay, so we've got one ear. How do we get another ear? Symmetry at the top. It's enabled. World center. Want the left to the right. Say yes, and there you go. So now we've got everything all together. But what we want to do is we want to join certain parts here. So I'm going to move the eyes to the top by grabbing the cross and dragging. That moves it up to the top. And now I've got head, nose and ears. And this next bit is one of the most important lessons that you're going to get when you're learning Nomad. So let's put wireframe on. These models are separate. This one, this one and the eyes, obviously, and the nose are all separate models. We're going to convert them to one model. Now, at the minute, this ear goes inside this head, this nose goes inside this head, this ear goes inside this head. We don't want that. We want to merge them into one watertight object. So how do we do that? So you have to select all the ones you want to merge. So you have to be on it. So if I was on the eyes now, it wouldn't work. So you have to be on one of the ones you're going to merge. Click the three arrows on the side, and then we want to merge them together. If you simple merge them, they would just join but they wouldn't weld together. If you voxel merge, you'll see what's about to happen and it will this will change your model completely. So this number here, the resolution, is going to be what really makes a difference. So if I just use the number that's in there now, let's just hit it and see what happens. So I'll hit voxel merge and you can see what's happened. So it's merged the models together, zoom in. You can see here now, there's no ear going inside that head. It's now just one mesh. And if you can see here, it's left the eyes. So these eyes, I can actually hide them with the with this little eye icon. So everything else is merged into one now. So to prove that, let's just take the nose, turn wireframe off. You can see it looks a bit blocky, but you really don't want to be worrying about that. So you're on the, it's called ears now because that was the one that was that, that was at the top. So we need to rename that now to full head, like so. And now symmetry's on, remember, as we're sculpting. So we're going to use the smooth tool, hold down smooth, and we're just going to smooth down any areas that don't look right. So that nose has now got a lot smaller and a lot tighter, and it's gone as a sphere now. It's just now part of the head. So we can do a couple of things here. We can smooth everything down. So the joins are all looking good now. The ears are looking good. Don't worry that it doesn't match. It, 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 this isn't about getting an exact match on your model at this stage. So smooth it all down like so. And then let's look at the model again. So 
If you wanted that to be higher resolution, you, sh you could basically remesh it again. So now there's nothing to merge, so that merging option has gone. So how can you do it? Well, if you go to the next panel across, this one, under the second one across, voxel, you can do it again. And this time you could increase or decrease the number. So if you wanted to go really low, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to show you. The grid around it shows you roughly what's going to happen. Let's, let's open it with the little um, pin so you can see it. We're going to go really low on the resolution and hit remesh and watch what happens. So that's made it very, very low polygon and very blocky. And you do need that sometimes, but we don't want that now. So undo that. And if I go the other way, this is the simple, fastest, best way to crash Nomad. So if you increase that more than the RAM that your machine's got, then you're going to have a problem. It will crash the machine. Now, how do you know that? Well, you don't. So what you do is before you do any of these big remeshes is just to save the model. So how do you do that? So come up here. So you're on project, save as, the little plus, and we'll just call him, won't call him what I've called him there. We'll just call him baby. I'm going to give him a code name, baby red 001, and hit OK. And that means now we've got a saved version. So we could go open and there he is saved. But we don't want that because we're happy with him. So let's go back to this. And remember, it's voxel remesh, the second one in, in the fourth one in, and you will increase the number a bit higher than we had it from when we started and hit remesh. And you can see now the remesh has been done again, but it's a little bit higher resolution. And you could be doing this loads. You could be remeshing all the time. The button is down here as well. So that that's basically where you can get it from. So you can get it from both of those places. Let's turn the wireframe off and now it's time to line this little sucker up. So let's go up to background and let's turn on uh, the image where he's in the background, which is this one. Let's move him along. So we want to position him in the middle of the scene like so, and we want to scale him up. But I can't see him to line him up. So what we can do is turn off perspective here at the bottom. If you can't see that, so you want to come up here, go to the second one in, and go to Add Shortcuts Bottom. And if you don't have it here at the bottom, you can add it from here, and it will appear as a shortcut menu here. So you could turn all these off, and they all disappear from this menu at the bottom. Well, we don't want to do that. We want everything switched on. So if it happens to be missing, just get it back from there. So we now want to overlay it. So Perspective, Off. So we've now got him. He's not in Perspective anymore. We're going to go snap, which will lock him directly to the front. And now we want to see through him. So there's two options we've got here. You've got overlay, which will make your model, basically, it'll overlay the, the model over the, um, the image in the background. Or you can alpha him out, which means he gets lighter in the background, which we don't want here at all. So what we'll do is we'll use overlay down a bit like this. And now we'll move around. You can see he's like a ghost. And now we can literally drag around based on what we've got in the background. So we'll go back to move and we will drag his ears around. In fact, he's a bit too big there, so we'll bring him down. Maybe actually looking at him, his eyes are in the wrong place, aren't they? So how do we solve that first of all? So let's go back up to our eyes, tap on the eyes, or you could just tap on them. And then we'll use gizmo and I want to move the eyes out like this now they're gonna I'm stretching them here what you could easily do is just um, use the um, symmetry off and move one and then mirror it again but I'm happy just doing what I've just done and moved him along like that we now need to go back to the full head let's shut this down and in the full head what we want to do is let's move him back to about here and let's just use move and start moving everything in into into the right orientation and, and size so if you if you move off the model you will rotate around don't forget so let's move those ears up move the ears up here if you move him off and you want him back you can snap him back like so so moving that one 
Moving that one. The cheeks are way too far in, so bigger radius. Move him along. Move the head out. Move the head like down a bit actually there. It's fine there. It's fine there. It's fine on the cheeks. And he looks good there. So we know roughly he's lined up correctly from the front. It doesn't mean he'll be he'll look good. He won't look good at this stage. But we have got him in a, in a, a position where he's very much lined up. Now we don't have a top view like this, but if you want to, you could put another top view in, or if you had a top view. But we're not bothered about that because this is your first go, hopefully, at Nomad. So let's move him out of the way. We don't need him now. So let's scale him down and just position him up a little bit. So we'll leave him there at the top, a bit bigger so you can see him, like so. Now, again, we don't need to see through him anymore, do we? So what we'll do is we'll get rid of that overlay completely. So we're back to seeing him like this. And if we want to line him up, we can still do it there. Now, let's just work on the eyes a little bit. So um, I'm going to use move and we're going to bring him round like this. I'm going to just, I know I said eyes, but I just want to bring that mouth out a little bit because you can see he's got a, a, like a, a much you know, more pulled out mouth. His nose is tinier. And this is going to matter for the eyes in a moment. So we want a cute little button nose like so. And now for these eyes, we're going to bring them up like this. So we're firmly seating them back in that socket. And let's give his cheeks a little bit of a push. We know they're right from the front, but let's give him some like puffed up cheeks from the side like this. And actually, now we know we can pull those ears back a little bit, tuck them under like this. So have a go at that. Okay. So we've now got him looking much more like our, our model, our, our reference. But what we do need now is we need eyelids. So there's two ways you can do this. So first of all, what you can do is you can duplicate these eyes like so. So I will take them here and I'll take the eyes and hit this button and duplicate it. And then I'm going to use the gizmo and I'm going to scale this one up on this side watch like so and it does it on both sides now i'll just move it along a little bit your eye is still inside look your eye your other eye is still inside and we'll leave that there like that go up to clay and smallish radius smallish intensity and you could sculpt on like this but actually that's carving in which is exactly what i wanted but the reason it's doing that is because i've got sub on here if I didn't have sub, it would come out from the surface like that, and that's sculpting. So there's one thing wrong there. One, we don't want it to be sculpting on. We want it to sculpt in, so we'll go back to sub. And also, we want it on both sides, so symmetry has to be on. And what we're going to actually do is sculpt here, and watch what happens if I keep sculpting. Remember what was underneath? So we had another eye underneath. We had our other eyeballs underneath. I'm going to hold down smooth and smooth the work that I've done and then do it again. I'm going to sculpt here. I'm going to sculpt that in and it's not affecting the eye underneath. It's just basically pushing in the area around the, the where I want the eye to be popping through. And it's instantly giving us these, effectively giving us eyelids. So we now do smooth again. And now we're almost at a position where it looks like our character straight away. So this is the simple, easiest way to do these eyelids. Now use move and get them to just look a little bit better from the different angles. So take your time with this one. This is really important. This is a really important part of the character is the eyes. As you can see, this has changed the look of the character already. So really take your time and look at some reference. It doesn't have to be the reference we've got here, but find some reference for the eyes and really focus on making the eyelids look cool like this. So pull them back if needed, and that will tighten them even more. Down if needed. And then up and down. So I'm pulling it down on the inside, up on the outside. That's a good little tip to know and then closer and tighter as you get to the corner of the eye, like that. There's something I can show you here that's a really good tip about eyes, so or certainly eyelids as they come to the where they meet the eyeball. So let me just do 
get him to a position where I'm happy. So if you're happy with that, smooth it a bit, like so. And then you want to use flatten, and this is a great trick. So you want to flatten the edge, like so. Flatten the edge at the front, basically. And then as you've tightened that down, then what you can do is go and flatten the underside because we have a little return lip here. And if you look at your eyelid, you can see there's a definite curve under like this. So you've flattened it at the front and flattened it from the top. And that will definitely improve the look of your eyes like so. Now, it's gone a little bit too far in there at the top. So again, be, be ready to tweak like this just to move it so it works really well. And if it's not quite nice enough or you're feeling like it's rough, then just use that smooth. And there you go. We have the eyes looking fairly OK. I'm just going to bring this one out from the side a little bit. I saw it from the side there, not looking quite right. So we'll just bring that one back a bit there. And from underneath, like so. There we go. Now, we need to join those eyelids, eyelids and you already know how to do this. So you've got, um, how do I know what I'm actually on, first of all? Because I'm on the head, I'm on the eyes, and I can't tell. So a good trick is to go up here and put outline on. And you can see there with outline, you can have any colour you want in outline. So if you scroll down and change this to white, this will outline whatever you're selected on. So I can see now that that, you think it might be eyeballs, but that's actually the eyelids because we've still got stuff inside. So we want to select two things, don't we? So we want to select the head. Let's open it up here at the top. We want to select the head and those new eyes that we made. What we don't want is the eyes inside. So we could actually hide them with those eyes like that. And these two that are together, we can voxel merge them together. So I'll, I'll stay around 400. So it's it, that's OK for most machines and we'll voxel merge those together. Now look what you've got. You've got one piece that's completely meshed together. And that, if you can nail that, that is one of the most important lessons that I'll teach you today. So I'm just gonna now smooth it. So before I do that, with sub, I'm gonna push that, the area inside right in. Then you smooth, and then smooth down the areas that are rougher. If you want to go with a higher resolution voxel merge or remesh, you will get a better result. But as I said, I'm trying to keep this for people with uh, machines with less RAM. And that, if you turn your eye back on, gives us our head, our eyes and our nose. And there's one little thing we'll do in this lesson before we go to, 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 to leave it for this first lesson. We want to put some th details in where the mouth is. We'll go to clay and we'll just slowly build up the mouth area like this. So this is the area that's coming down to his lips. And he will have a little dimple in the middle there. That's called your philtrum. That's basically, if I use the move tool, like so, you can see that's your philtrum. And that is the bit underneath your nose that defines the top of your lips. That's crucial to get that in there back to your clay and then we'll make the upper lip first of all like so and smooth it underneath and on top a little bit we will use flatten underneath and get this little bow shape that you're used to flatten on the top gives you a little bit more definition flatten on the top there and smooth it and that's how you do an upper lip the plane change is what matters. So you can see from the side, it's an angle. You're looking for this angle here. And if it's not right, not quite right, just pull it into shape. It should come back at the corners of the mouth under these cheeks. And then this should be a nice angle out there. And that that is literally all you need to make the upper lip. And by default, that's given us these cheek folds here. So nature's a wonderful thing. And if you start putting one thing in, you get the others for free. So you can see there, I'm moving things around. I'm trying to get a nice little shape. And if we've done that upper lip, it's so, so easy to do the bottom lip. And the bottom lip is two balls of fat like this. And then smooth them down. That grid's getting in our way now. So let's turn that off. If you remember, that's up here. That's the grid off there. And I've just done a mistake on the surface. So I'll undo it. Come 
down here and then just put a bit more bulk in and then smooth that down. And another good tip at that point is this needs to be supported with something underneath it. So they usually baby looking creatures usually have, you know, little lumps of, of, of little chubby cheeks and chubby chins. So you can just put a little bit there and we can go back and look at the reference of that later on if, if needed. But that supports the mouth underneath. And there you have it. That's the mouth done quite nicely. If you want to define it, which we will do in the next video, I'll show you how we're going to do it. We're going to use next tool called crease. And basically just crease gives you a nice creased line. And we'll go into the corner of the mouth and then into the corner of the cheek like that. So smooth both of those down and that one down. And the last one, a little bit of flatten underneath there. And that gives us pretty much the, the, the lip that we're going to work with. It's too big. We made them too big. So with your move tool, we can bring him down and make him smaller. But if you can nail that, that would mean you'd be able to sculpt lips on almost anything going forward once you learn those basic rules. Um, and, and you you know obviously this is a, this is a specific baby looking one but you know it, it, it doesn't take much more to, to be able to learn this for, for adult looking characters so just smooth it down a bit more and there we go so that is our block out done so we've got one of everything now so the next video I'm going to do I'm going to teach you how to you how to make horns with separate objects and then we'll go into another pass of detail to get him more accurate and then we will start on eventually getting him to a paint job so i hope you're enjoying this i'm taking my time so this really is for beginners and we do of course do a full beginners course um, a lot of people who follow me on this channel now know that we've been running these courses for a couple of years now. So if you want any of those details, they're all down in the description down below. But I hope you join me for the next one when we'll continue all of these uber basics of using Nomad Sculpt. I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please consider giving us a thumbs up because it does help us to get in front of other people who like this kind of content. And if you're giving us a thumbs up, then please subscribe to the channel and we'll let you know when we drop new content, which is usually every week. Have a great week, everybody.